Welcome back to Celeste Circle. I'm Angie Seth Walsh, and I'm here with my co-host, Kate Robertson. Hey, got my name right that time. <laughs> I did. Wow, now I'll just mess up later. <laughs> <laughs> so today's uh, podcast uh, episode is going to be, um, it's going to be something different. And we have a very, very, very special guest with us today. Um, we're going to be talking about fear and like where fear comes from. And then it's going to go into um, where we're talking about uh, monsters and in particular skinwalkers. And our guest today is my beautiful daughter, Sydney Walsh. And, and she did have something really unique happen to her at school. So she took this English class and for their whole semester, they picked a monster and they, they did like a, uh, that was their, their project for the whole semester. And she so chose skinwalkers. So let me introduce Sydney and get to talking about this and how all this started and what the process was. And then we're gonna just roll into it. And I'm gonna let you know that Kate and Sydney know a lot more about skinwalkers, the lore and all that than I do. So if you don't hear much from me, it's because I'm sitting here having my coffee. <laughs> Introducing my daughter, Sydney. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. I'm so happy and honored that you're on here. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so why don't Tell us about your class and how, like, um, how you picked Skinwalker and then, like, um, like how you had fear as the foundation, like, go into all of, like, all of that and then walk us through the steps of, like, you know, introducing the monster, your slideshow, all that kind of stuff. Okay, you're gonna have to, re um, remind me of those points because I really want to remember, like, the first couple things you said. Um, okay, I say a lot, and I wouldn't remember anything I said if somebody was saying it to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, it's English 104 is a research class. Um, basically, we have, um, instead of doing some, what she said, um, giving you some sort of boring topic, we, um, she said, I chose monsters. I did it last year with my class. Um, to kind of and keep the interest in. So as she makes sure everybody's interested, it, it'd be able to basically pick their own interests for the topic. Um, at first I hadn't, like it took me a week to figure out what monster I wanted to choose. Um, I would say like, it, it took me a while because I couldn't think of anything. And I'm like, well, Frankenstein is so original. Dracula, vampires are so original, werewolves are original. Like I had no idea what I wanted to pick. I don't even know what I thought of like my first, because I know I thought of a first like monster and I thought, oh my gosh, that's so stupid. Like that is not, <laughs> that is not going to get me anywhere in the research. So then I just started thinking, I'm like, what are some spooky monsters? So I looked up on Google, I'm like, spooky, like scary monsters. <laughs> like. I don't know. And the big list came up and I was like, Ooh, I saw, um, what did I see? I saw some sort of, I saw this monster called Krampus, right? He's creepy. But, and then I thought, Oh, that reminds me of like skinwalkers. So I decided to just choose skinwalker then because I I'm like, they scare me. And I thought like, once it came to my brain, I was like, this is this perfect because I know a lot about them. Like I've like read so many like horror stories about them, like just to freak me out. Like I thought it'd be a good topic for me to choose anyways. Um, and then, so what was the other question? Well, like, okay. So you chose that, that monster because it scared you. So basically the other monsters didn't scare you because they're more known. Yeah. Well, and like they're original, like that's what everybody's going to pick is like, Frankenstein and Dracula and werewolves and all that stuff like it's just 
is original. I didn't want to be original. I wanted something that people know of, but like probably wouldn't even think about to like put into a paper. Okay. So in your paper, you started off with talking about fear and yeah. how, how that starts in your childhood. So you want to talk about that? Yeah. So they're like, for, okay, so for the paper, we had to pick like four scholar sources, two popular sources, um, and there's like two other sources. Now I just can't remember which one. Um, whatever. So for scholar sources, they weren't necessarily like about the skinwalker. They were more so four factors that you can tie into your monster. So one being the disembodied voices one being how monsters are scary, one being fear in the brain, and then uh, the other one being the Navajo culture, like witchcraft in the background of the skinwalker. So basically the first source, which basically was probably one of the most important was fear in the brain as the paper was, my, the topic of my paper was how uh, fear contributes to like us and how we can, um, uh, con I guess con contribute it to monsters and how we are scared of monsters. So basically the article was called fear in the brain and it was written by two men. And it basically talks about how animals and humans are extremely similar when it comes to fear. Yes. We're different species, obviously, but when we come, when it comes to like reacting to like fear threats um, and like our fight or flight response, it's very, very, very similar. So um. I tied that in to show not only are humans scared of like skinwalkers, so are animals, because there's a saying that if you're like, I guess in the woods or in the forest or something, wherever you are, and it goes completely silent to the point where every single animal stops, you hear no rustling, birds stop, it is completely silent. That means like the skinwalkers around and they're silent because they're going into hiding because they're scared. Like it's so quiet, like you could hear a pin drop. So that's one thing I added in there because I thought the fear in animals and humans are the same. It, it was kind of perfect for, especially for that tale for the skinwalker. Okay. Um, now what about with, uh, you talked in the first part of your paper about like, I, I want you to elaborate on this because it was, I thought it was pretty well said but how you how you put it with uh fear like you're really not afraid of things when you're a kid but like if you watch a movie or you're around your friends or maybe even your family or whatever if they if they say something they try to scare you or whatever you were mentioning like monsters under your bed monsters in the closet that kind of stuff you know I had the monster spray for you guys when you were um but that's like all like a foundation for this. Yeah, so basically like your, your fears as you get older are basically what we're made up of. Like as you're a kid, so like you carry, so it's not always from like movies, TV shows, like videos or any of that it comes from like your imagination and what you've learned and what you've been around. So like, in kindergarten, I remember, you know, reading a book in class and it wasn't, it was about trolls and the book wasn't scary at all, but the, the appearance of the trolls is what terrified me. And I, like, I wouldn't even sleep in my own bed after that. You know, I was, I slept with you and dad all the time after that. I know. I remember we had to do the bedtime fairy thing <laughs> that brought presents when she slept in her own bed. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was fun. Um, um. So my thing before we like, we get into like, um, cause you had to do like leading up to your paper that you wrote, you had, you, where you introduced your monster, then you had a slideshow presentation of what they are. Uh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Uh, why they choose, uh, why you chose, um, your monster. And then you had your proposal for monster um how you related to the monster mm -hmm. and um an annotated bibliography which was eight to ten sources and research essay and then you had a monster showdown 
um, where you did a debate and you had a debate with somebody that did zombies. So it was like you were debating why skinwalkers were scarier than zombies. Mm -hmm. That's a really like well-defined uh, paper and class. Yeah. That was well thought out on your teacher's part and a professor's part and uh, and how you wrote it. I thought you you tied everything in really well too. Yeah, thanks. Um, so <clears throat> with, what I want to talk about with, uh, we, you and Kate are going to get into the things. What I want to say too, is that like, so when you have the, when you have fear and you're afraid of things, so when there's like stories or there's something that, that happens, particularly like with skinwalkers or, you know, another, uh, vampires or something like that, um, Bigfoot, things like that, where we're not really sure if they're real but there's factual data to kind of back it up but there's something called a tulpa that can be created when enough people believe and enough people repeat the same story over and over and this is like for generations or, or whatever they actually create what they're talking about which is called a tulpa mm -hmm. right kate yeah, absolutely. And not only that, it can also take entities that were created for one purpose. And it, if you change, if the story changes over time as it's told, that can actually change how the entity itself behaves. And it, <clears throat> it's the same. And honestly, if you wanted to get into it, you could even say that's the same for humans because it's influential, it's intention, it's um, the emotion that's behind it when you're talking about somebody or, um, you know, skinwalkers, for instance. If you're talking about skinwalkers, I know that majority, they're, Navajo has been highlighted because of Skinwalker Ranch, the show, but it actually spans across multiple indigenous tribes, you know, and Native American tribes and across the world, really. Right. So they've been used for a very long time as protectors of the land. And it's generally, it's a, a spirit, but there is good and bad. It all depends on who conjured it, who, you know, who, what did they conjure it for? What did they set it up to do? What intention did they have behind it? So when the intention changes through the story, that that being it becomes a tulpa, where it changes to fit the narrative it's been given. Okay. So not all skinwalkers are bad. Some were created by the medicine men and shaman to protect the land. Which, with that skinwalker show, if they do any digging on the land, um, which skinwalker, the secret to the skinwalker ranch, you can find that on Netflix, Hulu, and the History Channel. There's four seasons. It's really a great show because it like it takes people that are non-believers. There's an astrophysicist that's on there. I think his name is Travis, and he comes and he like does all of these, uh, like. Uh, what is it called? I'm having a brain fart. Um, experiments? I, experiments. Yes. Thank you. Um, experiments and to see, to prove, you know, and then they, they get the phenomena to happen. And so, um, so digging on the land, they don't like that because it's to protect the land, but there's also the ones that were created for, for other reasons. So why don't you guys like talk about, um, like, the lore, like how it came about with the skinwalkers and all of that? Mm. There was one thing I added, I wanted to add about the fear. Okay. Part. Yeah. Um, in my paper from the uh, article, I guess, Fear in the Brain, one quote that I um, like that could tie it back into the fear was most of the things that make us afraid are things we have learned about in our lives. So just basically, and I can conclude that our fears come from what we have already learned 
and been shown. So we create images in our imagination and, um, and we create these images and let our imagination take over um, and define those fears into monsters. Okay. So like, I guess like picture a bear or a snake or, you know, polar bear monster running after you. We know that we'll be threatened, like we'll feel threatened, but um, the, what genuinely like generally brings the fear is whether it's already been programmed to us to be scary or what we've already learned from a young age getting older. Conditioning. Yes. And then how emotions like fear get trapped in our body. And so Mm -hmm. it can cause a lot of things. And that can be like self-imposed beliefs, like, like what you're talking about, Sydney, or conditioning, what you're talking about, Kate, from like society or family members, other people. So there's, there's that, that's a great point. Um, So Sydney, you talked about um, that you, you saw, you read about one legend about how a skinwalker was created by a lost hunter. Um, yeah, basically like it was a lost hunter. Um, here, actually I can give you the, uh, so one of the tales that I read was, um, Basically, during a brutally cold winter, um, there was, you know, once a lost hunter or whatever, and this man's intense hunger drove him to cannibalism. After feasting on another human's flesh, he transformed into the crazed man beast, roaming the forest in search of people to eat. So that's one of the tales that I read about the skinwalker. Um, But are all skinwalkers cannibalists? Mm, I mean, yes and no, maybe. I just know that their main, like, goal really is they they want to turn you into a skinwalker. Like, they want to, like, take your soul and, like, develop, like, form you into a skinwalker. Like, that. that is their goal. Like, they're not there to, like, be nice. They're there to, like, hunt you down. Okay. Okay. There's, um, <clears throat> I know there's lore that talks about that, um, but there's also lore that basically there's different types. Like I kind of explained a little bit, it depends on what their intentions were set, what they've been transformed into. Um, the type that she's speaking of, I don't know if you want me to say the word on here or not, but the no. word. So then it, it is, um, yeah, I say it's the real name for the skinwalkers derived from all of the, the, the tribes. Every tribe has a name for it. It doesn't, but they say, if you say that name, this is the Lord, you say that name. You will conjure it. We don't right. want anything coming. <laughs> right. And we don't, you know, but technically that would be considered more of a, um, we'll just say entity, you know, darker entity rather than the, what majority of the tribes actually had skinwalkers for. The war okay. that I, um, in my experience with skinwalkers in New York on sacred lands, I, I have come in contact with a couple. Um, they, they're not negative. You know what I mean? They're, they're just spirits that were set to protect the land for a certain amount of time until the next spirit passed and then took over. You know what I mean? So they do things like, um, 
if you're doing something negative to the land, like you're clearing a bunch of trees or you're disturbing uh, burial grounds or things of that nature, then they would do things like plague style, like send, you know, a bunch of locusts towards you or mosquitoes or worms would come out of the earth or, you know, like a whole, like, like a bunch. <laughs> like gross amount um they will scare you they can transform into wolves uh deer different animals you know what i mean but they can also appear in human spirit form so it's just the kind that she's talking about like i said though they're more of a negative side of them you know not to say that, I mean, anything can be turned from positive to negative, you know? So it's just a matter of who you're dealing with at the moment. But yeah, there are the ones that are like known to like eat people or, you know, like chase after you and that sort of thing. Because a lot of times what they'll do, the, the more neutral or the lighter side, a lot of times if they come near you or after you, they're not really chasing you. They're just trying to get you off the land. They're trying to push you away. You know what I mean? But they're not actually going to attack you or do anything like that. But the ones that you're talking about, yeah, they're, and I've seen some nasty ones. There's, there's a video that I'm going to try and find. And if I can, I'll put it up on this video because that, that's a nasty one. And it's, it's mouth is like huge. And it's like, yeah, it's, I can't. I don't want to. Got the chills. <laughs> it's so gross. But I mean, it just depends on what you're dealing with. Yeah. So you both have had encounters. Kate, you briefly talked about your encounters with some skinwalkers. Sydney, you had an encounter with one and you had friends that had encounters with one. It was more like. I mean, I don't really know how much, like, if mine was, like, a really, like, really an encounter. It was just, I, I, I'm i taking it as, like, that's a weird coincidence. Um, but no such with, coincidences. <laughs> I said there's no such thing as coincidences. Whatever. And then um, my friends definitely, like, they swear up and down to this day, like, that they had an encounter um with the skinwalker so tell us about it because you would you talked um about it and like that they you guys go to this reservoir where you like uh to hang out people fish there and mm-hmm. you know, sunsets or the um or the stars and so they heard a whistle three times right yeah so they were sitting there on this like patch of grass by because like the reservoir is is huge i mean like this road like it there's like um a road that goes down one side then you can go around like you can just keep driving in circles around the reservoir and um so basically there's this one spot um and it's not too far like from the loading dock area where you can like th- put your boat on the water or whatever. Um, but it's a big patch of grass and uh, the water's like right there. So like you're sitting there and the water's there. And then like, you can see across, like also like across like all the houses and stuff over there, but basically your surroundings, like directly behind you is trees to the left is trees and to the right is trees. So there's like, and there's houses, but in that particular spot, the houses are like, a little ways down the road, both ways. So you're really just surrounded by trees and then, you know, the houses that are on the other side of the um, reservoir. So my friends had been sitting there. It was like 1230 in the morning and they were watching the stars. And um, one of them had heard a whistle and they were like, what the heck is that? And they thought, okay, well, you know, there's houses around here. Like, you know, people, someone's probably looking for their dog. Um, and they heard it again, the same tone, same pitch, like nothing about the whistle changed. They were like, 
that's weird. But, you know, your son's looking for their dog, you know, letting them out to go to the bathroom, whatever. And then they heard it a third time. And that's when they like genuinely got scared and thought something was weird because it was the same pitch, same tone, nothing about it changed. Um, so they all like looked at each other and my friend, he was just sitting there like paying attention to the whistles, but like not giving too much attention to it until his friends were like, get in the car, get in the car, get in the car, get the car. What is going on? And, um, I was like, get in the car. Get, get in the car. So I guess they all just like on the count of three got up and ran to the car and just drove away because they, they had like, not only were they scared, but like, they just felt like something was not right. And that you had said that that was, um, one way that they try to, they try to trick you. They is try like, to lure you in, yeah. So they can, they can uh, make their voice sound like someone that, you know, mm. um, you said like the whistling, they try to get your attention, but you had said that you can't engage with them. Yeah, no, you're not supposed to engage with them at all. You shouldn't call back to them. You, you hear your name. No, you didn't. <laughs> so you just ignore it. Yeah, you're supposed to ignore, ignore, ignore. Okay. You see something, you didn't. <laughs> you hear something, no, you didn't. You just keep going. So you had you had an encounter yourself with your friends. Um, you don't know if it was a skinwalker or not, but you said that they shape shift. So yeah. it was just weird that we, it, it was, it was the same day, the same night that my friends had went and watched the stars um, actually. So we were there to watch sunset and then, you know, hours later they were there to watch stars. And um, basically we were sitting there and we had just been talking about skinwalkers and it's funny because we were both at the same spot. I don't know if I mentioned that beforehand, but we were at the same spot. So like the spot that we went and watched the sunset was a spot they went and sat at to watch the stars. Um, and I even showed up cause I took pictures of my car that day right there with the sun shining. And I even showed him, I was like this spot right here. He was like, yeah, we, we were there. We were right there. So you know, there's houses around and we hear like, and we were just talking about a skinwalker and about how they can like shape shift into like your dogs and your animals and you know they can change their voice whatever and we were freaking each other out just because you know i guess that's what we do and we started to hear a dog bark like right after we heard that so we started hearing a dog barking and we were like what is <laughs> like what a weird coincidence and i know me and my one one of my roommates just looked at each other we were like do you see a dog we were like, no, <laughs> I don't see a dog. And um, like, it was, it was just weird. Like it was like this barking, echoing, whatever. So then when it started to get darker, we decided we're like, okay, well, you know, we've seen the sunset. We're going to get in the car now and we're just going to go back home. So we get in the car. <laughs> yeah, so we're driving down the road, a deer, just like literally out of nowhere, a deer to whomp right in the road. We were like, what is going on? Like, ah, like screaming at the top of our lungs. We were scared because, you know, then I, we all started convincing ourselves that it was a skinwalker because we were just talking about it and stuff. And then we look over and there's like four, like four more. And they all start coming across the road. And I can't remember if like beforehand, because I started to record. So like beforehand I started to record, there was one that was just like stuck. You know, just like standing there in the middle of the road, just like staring. And that's when like we started screaming and I started to record because it was so weird. And all four of them ran over, but then one of them stayed on the other side. And in the video, you can hear me say, oh, come on, buddy. And then my <laughs> other roommate was like, um, oh, you got separated. No, like it, it was just like, it, it, I don't know. I think it's a coincidence, but it was weird that like we freaked each other out. The fact that, you know, we had just been talking about it and then that happens. So I don't know. It was just weird. That was like, that was in October, right? And that's, yeah. Where you were in this class writing the paper and doing yeah. all the research. So coincidence, ironic, you know. I don't know. Kate? Weird. Partly imagination, partly manifestation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to manifest those things. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to, but you know, if you're talking about it a lot, thinking about it a lot, you, you, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. 
um, you guys were talking about that there, there is a way um, or ways to keep a walker mm -hmm. if you encounter one. You guys want to talk about that? Um, basically, like, they're deemed, like, impossible to keep in this, like, it's very emphasized on the maybe, like, maybe, like, just maybe be able to, like, but it's not guaranteed. So, like, one of the ways is to say, like, if you put white ash on, like, your knife or your spear, or your bullet or whatever, that's just maybe what my <laughs> not like, oh, that's going to work. But, like, just maybe, just maybe, not you, exactly. Where did you find that information? Um, I'd have to um, look for the source. I can send it to you. But I know exactly what website it is. I just have to, I would have to give you this. Okay. So like everything that Sydney's talking about today in Kate, like specifically Sydney, because she's written a paper on this for school, she had to have sources to back up all of her information. Mm -hmm. So that is the pertinent thing to remember here is that everything she's citing, she does have sources to back up. Um, Kate as well. Because you've done a lot of, you've done a lot of research too. I have done a lot of research, but more, mine, more just experience. Thanks for watching and join us next week, everyone, as we continue this conversation with Sydney Walsh. Talking about skinwalkers, conditioning, and fear. What are your fears? You can catch us right here on Celeste Circle YouTube channel. Or you can go to our podcast and listen if you prefer. Also, Celeste Circle, available on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Anchor.fm, and more. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make sure you hit that bell notification so that you get notified whenever we upload a new episode. So until next time, thanks for watching and listening. We'll catch you around the bonfire. Don't forget the marshmallows.